Welcome back to Poplar Preparedness. I got a special one for you today. Hope you guys are weathering the storm all right. The storm is a solar storm. We have a Category 2 uh, coronal mass ejection that is hitting us right now. So if you are into uh, if you're into amateur radio, if you're a ham. Uh, you uh, may have re- noticed some of this. Uh, you may have gotten some of the alerts telling you that uh, the radio frequencies are going to be kind of messed up um, and a little bit different in the last uh, Monday and Tuesday today. Um, your sensitive electronics are basically going to be all right up here. Um, some in the northern latitudes may actually experience a little bit of uh, an issue, but um, they are not expecting much. Uh, so uh, it's a Category 2, which is just a, a moderate uh, storm, um, which is why we didn't hear a big, um, big thing about that. But hopefully it does kind of get you aware of the fact that this kind of stuff happens. The sun is spitting out uh, solar storms in, in all directions and uh, sometimes they come our direction. And when they come our direction, they can cause a world of hurt. Um, we haven't had a really bad incident for over 100 years, 140 years. But uh, um, we can the Carrington event uh, fried telegraph wires, and that same kind of thing could happen today. EMP uh, by intentional nuclear strike um, is is a is a possibility. And if somebody else isn't trying to cause us harm, uh, the sun could go ahead and fry us. So um, this is something I have been a little concerned about, and some. It's been a hole in my preps uh, recently. I have uh, some uh, Bofang radios and such like that. I have some other sensitive electronics that uh, I-, I would like to protect. I mean, if something like that happens, you would need your electronics, and in that moment, you wouldn't have any electronics, possibly, depending on what exactly the intensity and such like that. Um, there's some things you can do. Uh, just very basic things is you can take your antennas out, right? Um, you can uh, uh, put them somewhere safe. Um, but this re- this video, we're going to be focusing in particularly on a company that I reached out to, Faraday Defense. They sent me some, uh, some stuff uh, at, at no cost, so that is my uh, relationship with them. They're not paying me for any review or anything like that. Um, but I... I reached out to them because I was very interested in the products that they have, and uh, in return, I'm, I'm doing a review for them. And I just want to put these in front of you guys because I think it's good product. Um, uh, I'm going to be doing another one in just a little bit, and that's going to have some other stuff uh, that is a different end of the spectrum for you. Um, but okay, so let's get into it. So they sent me down a, um, a Nest Z kit which comes with a 12 by 18 giant bag. You can fit a laptop in that thing. Um, An 8 by 10 and uh, three 5 by 7s. These are, they may look like Mylar bags, um, but they're thicker, thicker than what you normally get. Um, But you are are looking at the plastic clasps on the inside, and we're going to get into that. That's... I believe their weak point. Um, w- if you go around the the, the internets uh, or the YouTubes, you you can see a bunch of people going around trying to uh, test these things by sticking a cell phone into the bag and then trying to call it and then nesting um, bags and such like that. And that's not really a great test for what we're trying to do: protect from EMP and coronal mass ejections. So. Um, the example is like uh, uh, is like you're sitting in your car using your cell phone, right? But what happens if you get struck by lightning? You'll survive the lightning strike, but you'll also receive the phone call, right? So just because cell phone signal can get into these bags, um, these are made f- uh, for EMP defense. These are made to shed a lot of energy off the uh, off your electronics and to really, really dampen um, certain uh, frequencies and 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 uh, certain energy. Okay, not uh, not targeting uh, cell phone frequencies especially. Now they did send me another uh, 
another one which actually is designed to to block uh, cell phone frequencies. I, I guess people have done enough of these tests that uh, they, they throw one of these in there just to show that uh, that they can make stuff that blocks cell phone signals. And these are very interesting as well, but for a whole different purpose. And I'm going to talk about that just shortly. Um, I'm going to go into just a couple of the reasons why these tests where they put the cell phone in the bag, those are bad tests. First thing, um, EMP defense and signal defense, you need to actually have insulation. Okay, you can't just put a cell phone like directly into a metal bag because in the inside of here is metal and you can't be contacting the wall. So what you need is you need some kind of insulation. You can use a regular old sock. A washed sock, please, everybody. Don't, don't. Mmm, smells good. Because it's clean, okay? Uh, you can use a clean sock. If you get uh, some stuff from, uh, you know, packages that have that kind of bubble wrap kind of stuff in there, that's perfect. You just drop a cell phone right in there. And then you seal that up. And then you can drop it into EMP bag, right? The other thing that you need to realize, too, is that um, um, these things are called Nest Z because for a reason. You need to nest them. That's what they're designed to do. Um, you put in one bag, you put it in the next bag, and, you know, even possibly the next bag after that, or into some kind of device um, that will shield it. Uh, one thing that you need to also keep in mind with that, too, is when you nest them, you need to have insulation between the layers, okay? You can go ahead and just put duct tape on this. Anything non-conductive, just, just something to keep the metal from the metal, okay? Because otherwise, uh, it's like you have one layer. You need to have multiple layers, and they have to be metal, insulator, metal, insulator. Now, if you know your electronics and you know your... Uh, uh, if, you know, basic your basic circuitry and such like that, you know what happens when you put a conductor um, and then you have insulator and then conductor again. What was that? That's a capacitor, right? Um, that is not going to protect everything inside completely, but what it does is it really adds up a lot of uh, protection. Um, so multiple layers is your best bet. If we get hit by an EMP and you want to make sure your radios are working, um, if you want to make sure that um, your sensitive flat, uh, hard drives that you have your stuff backed up on or whether you're using, um, uh, f see these things, because this is an actual hard drive, um, this is very sensitive to an EMP. Um, so you know what else is very, very sensitive to EMPs? LEDs. LEDs. Um, are very sensitive to, uh, to EMP, and if you uh, if all your uh, lighting is is uh, LEDs, which is is great, if we have an EMP or a, a, a coronal mass ejection from the sun, um, that can fry your LEDs, and then where are you then? So I want to make sure I have a bunch of LEDs in Faraday cages. I want to make sure that my uh, my backup radios that I'm not using are in Faraday cages, and uh, I want to make sure that um, I want to have my data backed up in a Faraday cage and uh, even uh, backup cell phone in a Faraday cage. So um, that's what I'm going to be doing. Is I'm going to be layering, layering them up. Um, that's that's uh, what we're looking at here. This is a very good budget option. There's a link down below. And that will, um, it's not an affiliate link or anything, um, but these, these things are a great budget option uh, to do. You can make these yourself, and that's, that's doable, but it's, it's easier to buy them, and it's easier to have them uh, ready. These are double-walled. That's something that you don't get in your, uh, in your standard Mylar. Um, they're they're backed by uh, they have a plastic backing too to give them more sturdiness. Um, these can be uh, heat sealed, and that would be the ideal thing to do to like completely close this off. Like I said, there's this plastic clasp which means you have a gap in there, which is not great. So 
um, what I'd suggest is either heat sealing it if you're not going to access these uh, items for a long time, or you should really have a large collection of these guys. Um, go to the Dollar Tree, get a bunch of these. Like, super cheap, and like, these are like one of the best prep items ever, okay? Um, fold the bag over, clip it. That way it gets the metal contact in the metal, and uh, it keeps... Uh, it gets it shut. If you leave it open like this, um, there is potential for energy to get in through the end, and and you're defeating the purpose. You can also use clips like that. These things are awesome as well. Um, get a bunch of these too. <laughs> you can use them. So layering those, and then finally, let's talk about the um, the non EMP bag, but the cell phone blocking bag. Um, this is supposed to be a five by seven, but, um, according to my math, uh, it's larger than five by seven. Uh, this looks like a, a, a 10 by 12. Um, I think it's a 10 by 12. Maybe they just sent me the wrong thing. Um, but this is, um, the NX3, uh, fabric is basically focused on blocking RF signals. So if you, uh, don't want to be tracked, if you want your cell phone to, to not be broadcasting your information and your location, everything like that. Having a bag like this, dropping it in, and then um, it actually rolls up. Okay, so, and then uh, that gives you the same seal, but that actually gives you a good seal. Okay, unlike uh, these bags, they have the plastic clasp in there, which concerns me. Um, this will block RF signal. Um, this is kind of the stuff that they use uh, for isolating evidence and such like that. If the police come and take your cell phone, um, they're going to drop it in a bag like this. Um, that's going to give you uh, pretty good, I mean, it's going to give you protection. It's going to stop any cell phone signals. Will it pr provide as much uh, EMP protection? Um, no, because it's not designed for that. It's designed to stop uh, a lot of small signal um, as opposed to, and my jargon is way off. I'm sorry. Uh, some of you guys are going to go and correct me in the comments below. For those of you who are hams out there um, and you're saying you better not press the button on that. Well, I actually am allowed to press the button on most of these channels uh, since I am a general. So uh, I just got my general license. Um, so if you guys are uh, hams out there and uh, you like to uh, connect with me, um, shoot me an email um, and, um, and maybe we can contact. I haven't really gotten on the airwaves too much just yet, um, but I look forward to doing that more in the future. Um, shoot that into me in an email. Um, I, I don't like to get my... Uh, my handle out there on the uh, the internet uh, where uh, people can look me up, but um, uh, my email for everyone is uh, is in the about page in the back there. Um, so if you want to shoot me an email for anything, if you have questions or if you uh, have comments or anything like that, um, you can shoot me emails there. Faraday Defense. This is a budget option. I looked around, and uh, this is this is a good, affordable option. They got them up on Amazon. Um, they have um, uh, they have them up on their website. I'll have both the Amazon link and the uh, the F uh, Faraday Defense uh, website as well. Um, I'm I'm grateful that they sent me that stuff to check it out, um, and uh, hope you guys check them out too if you're looking for something along those lines. I have another w video coming at you uh, today. Uh, we're gonna hit you with two for this uh, solar storm, and uh, and uh, I think you'll like what I uh, what I have next there too. But just just be thinking about what you're doing for EMP defense and for uh, uh, for for blocking coronal mass ejection um, disturbances in the force, if you will. Um, your electronics, uh, you only get one shot at it. If we have an event like that, which is really a matter of time, not an if, um, either your electronics are protected or they're not. And if they're not protected, they could all be destroyed. And if they are, that's the time you'll need them. So um, think that through. And uh, I, I hope you, uh, you guys uh, take some steps to uh, get some of your electronics at least uh, EMP hardened. And, uh, you know, be a little more ready for uh, what is to come. All right. Steve Poplar out. See you later.